whenever you see a man or woman in sorrow and trouble, the way to look at it is not to blame him or her and inquire how they came there, but to say, here is an opening for God's almighty love. Here's an occasion for the display of the grace and the goodness of the Lord. The Bible asks a question throughout its pages over and over through the Old Testament, the New Testament, the prophets, Jesus himself. This is the question. What good are your eyes if you cannot see? Why even have them? The prophets Isaiah, Ezekiel, Jeremiah, they essentially say the same thing. Jeremiah even uses this, this word. He says, you senseless people. And, we, and he's not talking about the brain. Like we have no sense, we can't think. He's literally meaning like, hey, you have eyes but do not see. You have ears, you do not hear. The part of our five senses. Jesus himself quotes Isaiah, Matthew 13. This is why I speak to them in parables, Jesus says. Though seeing, they don't see nothing. Though hearing, they don't hear or understand. In them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah. You will be ever hearing but never understanding. You will be ever seeing, but never perceiving. For this people's heart has become calloused. Underline that in your Bible. They hardly hear with their ears, and they have closed their eyes. Otherwise, they might see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their hearts, and turn, and I would heal them. I would cure the blindness if we move from having a calloused heart to a heart of understanding. A calloused heart is the cause of blindness. In John chapter nine, Jesus is healing this man born blind, his physical blindness as a sign that, <clears throat> excuse me, that he came to all of us to heal us of spiritual blindness. Anyone here got a blind spot? Don't raise your hand. Because some people wouldn't. And I would say to you, if you're not raising your hand when somebody asks you if you have a blind spot, then you probably have a blind spot. <clears throat> we all have blind spots. Opening the eyes of the blind was prophesied to be the work of the Messiah. Isaiah 35 says, the eyes of the blind shall be opened. Is he talking about physical blindness there? To further answer the question, look at Luke chapter four, one of the biggest mama jama moments in all of scripture. It's incredible. Jesus walks into the temple in Nazareth where he's from, where his parents are from. He was born in Bethlehem, lived in Capernaum, but this is kind of his hometown. And as he walks in, the rabbi of the temple hands him the scroll that's been pre-selected. Jesus doesn't know what it is. Well, he does. He's Jesus. He opens it up, and it's Isaiah 61. And these are the words that he reads in front of this crowd. The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners, recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Later, he goes on to say, Today, the scripture is fulfilled in your presence. I'm him. And they get mad. They throw him out. They try to throw him off a cliff. And Jesus walks through them like, you ain't killing me. Forget about it, right? But he reads Isaiah 61. But I'm going to read Isaiah 61 to you now. And I want you to see something that is missing or it appears to be missing. Verse 1 of Isaiah 61. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me. Sounds like Luke chapter 4. Because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. That sounds familiar. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives, and release from darkness for the prisoners. Nowhere in Isaiah 61 does it explicitly say that he came to give people who were blind sight. What it does say is that he came to give release from darkness for the prisoners. If your eyes are unhealthy, you are plunged into darkness. Jesus came to heal our eyes so that we would be submerged into light and life and freed from darkness. This is what he means when he says, I've, came, I've come to give the blind sight. Spiritually blind. Not physically blind. Although he does that too. But watch this. This is why we get to this interesting part of the scripture in John chapter nine, maybe troubling when you first read it because the disciples say, hey, why is this guy blind? In that day, they believed in reincarnation. So they asked, did he sin in a previous life? And that's why he's blind. He didn't sin in his mother's room like mommy, right? So he must have sinned in a previous life. Or did his parents sin? And now God is punishing them because... They were bad 
so you have a kid with this issue. Does that sound like God? Hmm. And Jesus says this happened to reveal the glory of God. This happened so that the works of God may become evident in this man. And so I say, God, are you telling me you caused this man to be blind? Are you telling me that in my life, you've given people that I love infirmities, maladies, afflictions of the body? Me and my body, I got this thing going on I told you about last week over here. Like, did you give that to me? Is that what you're telling me? I say, no, that's not what he's telling us. But what he is telling us is that when we see broken things, when we see things that don't appear to us to be health, it is pointing us to our need for a savior if we have eyes to see it. If we have ears to hear it. Birth defects and other such tragedies that we see are sometimes the result of the parents. Fetal alcohol syndrome. You, you can name a bunch of things that a parent could do to the child while in the womb that produces some sort of malady in the child when they are born. That can happen. It does happen. It's a very, very small segment of times that that happens. But more often than not, and in the case that Jesus is speaking of right here in John chapter 9, the malady that anybody experiences in their body, including this man, is simply due not to a specific sin of any one person, but to the general condition of sin that is upon the earth which has plunged the earth into darkness and is exactly the context in which we live. Let me say it to you this way. In the garden was both the tree of knowledge of good and evil, which we were not supposed to eat of because then we try to be like God and there's only one God and we're not him. And also the tree of life that we could eat of freely. There was no restriction against the tree of life. Our bodies were meant to be perfect as we ate of the tree of life, living in the presence of God in the garden together with him. It was so perfect that nobody wore clothes. There's no shame. It's just perfection with the Father. Then Adam and Eve decided to disobey God and eat of the tree of the the knowledge of good and evil and therefore were cast out of the garden and left behind the tree of life. And when Adam and Eve sinned, the principle of death and its associated destruction was set upon the earth. And that is the context in which we now live and now have to deal with on a daily basis. And so what happens in John chapter nine is not God healing a man of blindness. It's God healing the man of the curse of death and destruction that are set on the earth because of sin. And the result is a physical healing of blindness. But he wasn't just healing him of blindness. He was overruling the curse of death. He was putting the corrective lens upon this man and the death and the destruction were removed from his body. Are you picking up what I'm putting down? Is anyone over here picking up what I'm putting down? (laughs) Praise God. So, uh, Charles Spurgeon, very famous pastor, preacher, author of yesteryear, once said, whenever you see a man or woman in sorrow and trouble, the way to look at it is not to blame him or her and inquire how they came there, but to say, here is an opening for God's almighty love. Here's an occasion for the display of the grace and the goodness of the Lord. When we see a blind spot, It's not meant to jump on a person and make them feel terrible about themselves and how they got there. And you got to feel shameful. There is no shame and condemnation in Christ Jesus. But rather, it's an opportunity for us to say, man, there is an issue. I cannot wait to see how God's love and God's power and God's grace overcomes this death and destruction in me to bring glory, to bring light, to bring sight. Amen. Amen. Blindness, problems arise when we don't think we have a problem. Problems arise when we don't think that there's a savior for our problem. And problems arise, blindness arises, the the heart of the person gets calloused when we don't know that it's Jesus that is the savior. 
So you may not know you have a problem, and that could be blindness. You, you may not think that there's anyone that can help you, and that's blindness. And you may think that something else can help you besides Jesus, and that's blindness. When we understand, man, I got an issue. I got an issue in my relationships. I got an issue with sin. I got an issue with finances. I got an issue internally, mental health. I need help. I need a savior. And the only one who can save me is Jesus. That's when we have eyes to see. And that's when we have ears to hear. And the healing comes. God overrules the principle of death and destruction in our lives as we turn to him.